Bless the Lord, all my soul and all that's within us. Bless his name. Good evening, servants of the Most High, third dimensional warriors. Hallelujah, this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a, a choice to rejoice. Amen. Things are getting crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, things are getting crazy out there, man. I don't know if you, if you heard about the, uh, in Indiana, somebody poured arsenic in the river. Tons of it. Killing millions of fish. Talk about stupid. Then there was a hailstorm that killed millions of birds. I mean, things are happening, man. <laughs> just, just. And, and again, remember, there is the Antichrist that is trying to cause all kinds of problems. Amen? But there's something that God is doing, and he's always on the... He's always on the alert for us and watching out for us. But the whole thing is being able to hear him and follow him. Amen? We just turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. In verse 11. <clears throat> Let's speak it together. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly what? Lusts. Those are desires. Which war against the mind, will, emotions, imagination, which war against your soul. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles. Now I want you to understand something very important where it says having your conduct honorable. It means maintain a level of integrity. One of the things God is doing right now is building a higher level of integrity in his people. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in a day of visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, that you, in other words, by maintaining a high level of integrity, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men and women. As free yet not using this liberty as a cloak for vice, but as a bondservant of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Again, by your good conduct, he calls this integrity. Why? Because he is building an integrity right now in the body of Christ, a higher level of integrity that has not been reached yet. <clears throat> Why? Because it brings glory to God. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. There are things that it uses to build integrity. In 1 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 9, 1 Corinthians 3, 9.
Everybody there? For we are God's what? Fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. You know, I was... I was uh, sitting in my living room and all of a sudden I could sense the presence of the Lord. And he said, he wanted me to consider something. And it's something that we talk about, you know, but it, it, was, it was a deeper arena of, he says, I want you to consider the split second that you enter the presence of the one that created you. And it was like I was brought there. Entering that first split second in the presence of the one that created you. Overwhelming, ripping love. You know, the hardest thing for individuals is that they don't realize when he says, I don't know you. People will enter the presence of God and all evilness and wickedness will be ripped from them and they will receive the love of Christ. And only those that fall in the integrity of Christ will stay. The rest will be removed. Can you imagine entering the presence of God and then being removed from it? You know, I had my visitation from the Lord. I got a glimpse of God's true glorious presence. It was ripping. Ripped every part of my being, every part of my members. Every part of his light penetrated every part of me. It was like I disappeared and then was re-put back together. But I was a new creation, brand new. And the first thing I realized was that everything I've ever sought for, everything I ever worked for, Everything I ever desired was his presence. But evil misleads people to go for self-fulfillment, lust fulfillment, and selfish fulfillment, all designated by the powers of darkness to keep us from that reality. In other words, when that was given me, it was a reality check is for that one first split moment second, boom, that you're in his presence. You're in the presence of the one who loves me and you so much and created me and you. And it was just, for me, it was overwhelming. Just to, trying to comprehend it. But see, in this is why he's building integrity in the body. More integrity, a level of integrity. In other words, he's building the character of Christ. It's, it's building integrity. Amen? What is integrity? It's the quality of being honest. Integrity is associated with the quality of being honest. Not deceived, being honest. It is the practice of being honest. It is the quality of being honest, and it is the practice of being honest. It is showing a consistent, uncompromising, Adherence to 
It is showing a consistent and uncompromising adherence to strong moral, ethical principles and values associated with the kingdom of Christ. It is showing a consistency and a consistent of uncompromising adherence to strong moral and ethical principles and, and values of the kingdom of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 10, Paul states, According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he builds on it. This is integrity building. He is building integrity. Why? Because this building of integrity is actually building his character. But again, integrity is the quality of being honest in the practice of being honest and showing that consistent, uncompromising adherence to strong moral, ethical principles and values of the kingdom of Christ. In other words, so there's got to be a consistency to maintain an integrity. If there's not consistency, there is no integrity. Is everybody okay? Now, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid by, which is by Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he is built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. Any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are what? Futile. So there are attributes of kingdom integrity. The first attribute is called reverence, honor, and respect. It's called the fear of the Lord. Reverence and honor and respect. And what are we reverencing, honor, and respecting? His presence, his power, and his truth, which is the anointing. So we are reverencing, we are honoring, and we are respecting the anointing. So the fear of the Lord is associated with reverence, honor, and respect to his presence, power, and truth the one who created you and me the second attribute is is everybody ready you'll have to get the tape <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah so in short the first attribute is the fear of the Lord <laughs> The second attribute is faithful, consistent, and loyal. Faithful, consistent, and loyal to practice righteousness and justice. Faithful, consistent, and loyal to practice righteousness and justice. I guess you might call these sets of attributes. The third set of attributes is responsibility and accountability to the call 
purpose and destiny of the eternal council. It is responsibility and accountability to the call, purpose, and destiny of the eternal council, which is given by them. So in other words, to fulfill it. This is an integrity that's looked on by God, not by man. There's a difference in integrity looked on by man. In the world, somebody shows up to work on time, they call it integrity. If they cash their check on time, they call it integrity. <laughs> the world does, has a different perspective of godly integrity compared to carnal integrity. Amen? So the third group, uh, set of attributes is responsibility and accountability to the call, purpose, and destiny of the eternal council. The fourth is able to discern when evil deception is influencing. Is to able to discern the evil deception of influence. And there's a second part to it, and also to discern when to depart from evil. Amen? So you got to be able to first discern it, then you got to discern whether you're to depart from it or not. Able to discern. When evil deception is influencing and able to depart, able to discern to depart from it. The fifth set of attributes is self-awareness of weaknesses. The fifth is self-awareness of our weaknesses, our strengths, our boundaries and limitations. Self-awareness of weaknesses, strengths, boundaries, and limitations. These are all attributes to kingdom integrity. Self-awareness of our weaknesses, strengths, boundaries, and limitations. The sixth one is denies self and ungodly associations. The seventh attribute is hates evil practices of compromise and dishonest gain. See, we should hate these things. We should hate compromise. We should hate associations with dishonest gain. This is what God is building, this integrity. It's another level of integrity. And the eighth, which eight means new beginnings, it's all based on humility, honesty, humility, honesty, authority, and endurance. It's based on humility, honesty, authority, and endurance. Always setting the Lord before them. In other words, in this integrity, we're always fighting to keep the Lord before us. Nothing else. Nothing. So everything is built on and based on the humility is being humble because he rejects the proud. Amen. It's based on humility and honesty. Authority, that means who you are. Endurance, we all have to endure. And setting the Lord before us at all times. These are just a few of the building of integrity attributes. These are what's happening with us right now. In Psalm 15.
What is this? Building the character of Christ. The quality of being honest and the practice of being honest, showing a consistent, uncompromising adherence to strong moral and ethical principles, values of the kingdom of Christ. In other words, it's a good day to die to yourself. <laughs> Building integrity. In Psalm 15, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks what? Uprightly. Who works righteousness. Who speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears on his own hurt and does not change because of consistency and uncompromising. And he who does not put out his money at his usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be what? Move. So, <laughs> integrity that reaches the level does not change. There is no change in that individual. Why? That person will not be moved, no matter what happens. Because reaching that level of integrity means you've reached the level of character of Christ. It doesn't mean that you won't, again, you won't be moved, amen? But you'll be led. Does everybody get it? In other words, you won't be moved out of position because you'll maintain course. But some people will never reach it because they've never released and relinquished some of the things God is bound to get rid of. It's impossible to reach that level of integrity. And Proverbs 10. You know, in this, there should be a desire to want to please God. <laughs> if the desire is not to want to please God, but please self, you'll never reach that integrity. And God will never trust you full. In Proverbs 10, verse 9, is everybody there? It says, he who walks with what? Integrity walks what? Securely. In other words, they are, they're not insecure, they're secured. Why? Because they are secured and solid with the relationship. They know God is going to work everything out. But he can't work everything out with no integrity. But he who perverts his ways will become what? Known. Walks with integrity, walks with securely. In Proverbs 11. In verse 1. Is everybody okay? Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Verse 2. Speak it with me. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. The integrity upright will guide them but the perversity of unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lusts. Why? Lack of integrity. Psalm 18. Psalm 18, 
Psalm 18, verse 20. How many of y'all know somebody that's anxious for everything carries not the level of integrity that's pleasing to God? Amen. A person that can't wait or endure doesn't carry the integrity that's pleasing to God. Again, we want to, God is building an integrity that's pleasing to him. Amen. Psalm 18, verse 20, let's speak it. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands he has recompensed me so in other words he rewarded me according to my what integrity for i've kept the ways of the lord and have not wickedly departed from my god he's not departed from that integrity see so many times people think well i've not departed from the lord i still believe in him but when you depart from the integrity you've departed from him For all of his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him. I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my what? Righteousness or what? Integrity. According to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. He rewarded me according to the level of his integrity. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. So it's consistent, the same as faithful. Yeah. Although some people are consistent in the wrong things, you know. <laughs> And they're faithful in the wrong things. <laughs> oh, happy days. Second Pete, chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power is what? Given to us all things. His divine power is given to us all things. Does everybody see that? that pertain to life and godliness, to the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Now, I want you to understand, this is a divine power, not carnal or human or soulish power. There's a difference. By which have been given to us exceedingly and great promises, precious promises, that through these we may partake of the divine nature. How many of y'all know the divine nature is a level of integrity of Christ? Amen. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. Again, lust is an overwhelming what? Desire. Amen. So until our desires are out of the way, we can never reach that level of integrity. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, what? Self-control. It means control over the old man. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. To brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted. If he's short-sighted, he doesn't. He's not carrying that level of integrity because that level of integrity sees through everything. Even to blindness, he says, and has forgotten that it was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brother, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure because if you do these things, you will never what? You will never stumble or be moved. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to be partakers of the divine nature. That means we must be partakers of his integrity. In Matthew 7. Mm -hmm. 
building integrity. In other words, God is building the body of Christ up to a special level of integrity that is pleasing to him. You know, some people have an integrity that's built up to pleasing to themselves. <laughs> I'm all right. You blew it already. Ain't none of us all right. Matthew 7, 21. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, lukewarmness is lack of integrity. It's not reached that level of integrity that's pleasing to God. That's why he says if you're lukewarm, he's going to what? Spit you out. Why? Because that level of integrity has not been reached that's pleasing to God. I was at a meeting today, and I was grieved in my spirit. It was a gathering of the body of Christ. They were there for a good reason. They talked about what was going on and so forth. It was about opiates and whatever, how they want to combat it. And, of course, awareness is important. But what good is awareness if you don't know how to fight it? That's what grieved my spirit. There wasn't one talk about spiritual warfare. I was grieved. In fact, I even wept in my spirit. I wanted to stand up and start screaming. But I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> it's like, man, the heck happened so we don't fight flesh and blood. What happened? This is the body of Christ. I was grieved. I got to talk to some people afterwards. Oh, you're one of those that got freed right away. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to know how to fight? I was, I was grieved. It's like, come on, man. Lack of integrity. It was all done according to self-ish ambition. Not one word about a demon. Not one word about evil presence. They were comforting individuals that lost children to opiates. It was a soulish meeting. I was grieved. But I was there. So God's got something going on. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Well, praise God. That about completes the whole thing, right? Because <laughs> if you're not carrying a level of integrity, you're not going to do the will of God. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? We even cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name. And Jesus answers, and I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Why? Because they were doing the works of God, but not carrying the integrity of him. There's a difference. That's where people think, because they do all kinds of works for God, that they're okay. But don't carry the level of integrity that pleases God, or that will even allow them into the kingdom of God. Somebody understand that? Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, hello, it's called obedience. I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock. And if you're building your house on the rock, you're building the house on the anointing. If you're building the house on the anointing, you're building integrity of Christ Jesus. 
And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock, on the anointing. Reverence, honor, and respect to the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having what? Authority. That's integrity. And not as the scribes who were just writers and wimps, but one who had authority. Amen? Oh, wisdom and authority is used to build integrity. 1 Peter chapter 1. This is where we must examine ourselves. Am I, am I allowing the Lord to build the integrity that brings to the level that is pleasing to Him? Or am I building my own integrity? First Pete chapter 1. Glory. Verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you and me, who are kept by the power of God through faith, that's through your connection, for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, which is testing your integrity. That the genuineness, everyone say genuineness. Oh man, do you know that genuineness has to do with honesty? Honesty. That your genuineness, your self-examination, how you see things. What is the reality? Have you reached that level of integrity, the genuineness of your faith, your connection, your reality? See, there's a reality that you and I must maintain also, which maintains a level of integrity. Who you are. What's going on? What's the season? What's the time? What's happening? <laughs> There's a level of integrity that knows all things. The genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by what? Fire. Those are called trials. May be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, so now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Powerful. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied to the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into. Understand something that even the prophets when they were prophesying, didn't understand what they were prophesying. But they were speaking those things to come to pass. Verse 13, what does it say? Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. In other words, protect your thoughts. Hello. Protect 
and only let one voice be led in your temple. Anything more than one voice is the temple is divided. It will not stand. It's unstable. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Therefore, gird up, the gird up the lines of your mind. Be sober. That means alert. Amen. Aware. And rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former desires or lusts of your past life as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct or in your integrity. In other words, this level of integrity will produce what we call holiness. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Trials build integrity, knowing what pleases and displeases God. This level of integrity is considered sanctified and holy. Hebrews 4. So can you carry a level of integrity without a level of sanctification? No. So if you keep touching on clean things in your mind and everything else, are you going to reach a level of integrity? No. Not if you keep touching on clean things. Yeah. <laughs> Unclean. Unclean. Amen. Why? Because they defile, don't they? They contaminate. How many of y'all know a lie is unclean? So if you've been lied to and you accept it, it causes you to become unclean and defiled. It will even bring another voice in you. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? <laughs> Where I say to go, Hebrew? Hebrew. Hebrews. Four. In verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith to those who heard it. Wow. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he said, so I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Now, does disobedience carry a level of integrity that pleases God? No. These are all signs of lack of the level of integrity. How about rebellion? Amen. Again, he designates a certain day saying in David, today after such a long time as it has been said, today if you will what? Hear his voice. Not everyone else's, his. Do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. Therefore remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of what? Disobedient. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Discerner of the thoughts and intents. Of thoughts and intents. 
See, the level of integrity that God is requiring me and you now as he's building this to, we already know our intents. See, there's always a self-examination. What's my intent? What's my motive? If I make this decision, what's the end result? Does everybody understand that? Am, is this decision pleasing God, displeasing God? Am I discerning the voice of evil or the voice of righteousness? All of these areas. Is this holy, unholy? Is this clean, unclean? That is always constant with the level of integrity. So we're always ready. We know. We know. This is where the word says that the anointing allows me and you to know all things. Why? Because if we truly had the reverence, honor, and respect for his presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, which is the anointing, if we carry the fear of God to the anointing, that will bring us to the level of integrity. As long as that is maintained all the time. It must be maintained. We must be consistent on it. We cannot compromise this. We must hate compromise. Amen? Listen, we are being raised right now to another level because what God is trying to get to me and you. We are in the years of plenty. Not everyone will receive the plenty because they're not reached that, that place of level of integrity where God can trust that individual. Does everybody understand? Now, there are people that will get inheritances and all kinds of other stuff, but it doesn't mean that they reach the level of integrity that, that was blessing from God. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Building integrity will take building up your faith. Amen? Amen. And complete trust in Him. No matter what's going on, I have to trust the Lord. It just doesn't seem, I have to trust the Lord. No matter what. There is a full, complete level of trust in God. Our dependency is on him, not on man. Amen? Man is not our provider. God is. He is our source. Everything else is a resource. Amen? 2 Timothy 2. Oh, happy days. And everybody's quiet tonight, y'all, right? Woo! -hoo! <laughs> Second Timothy 2 is just for me and you. Verse 21, are you ready for this one? Therefore, that means cooperate. If you will cooperate, amen. If anyone cleanses himself from his, the what? Ladder. Ladder, that means pass, not a ladder that goes up and down. Amen? It's not a painter's ladder. This is your past. If, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from his past thoughts, past desires, amen, past mistakes, past successes, Everything of the past. Why? You can't, you can't step into the future if you haven't cleansed yourself from the past. It's impossible. He will be a vessel of what? For honor. For honor. Hmm. Sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work. Now, can this happen if we haven't reached a level of integrity? No. It will never happen. Because a vessel of honor, remember, honor is associated with honest. Amen? So we must be honest in every area of our life, with ourself, with others, but especially with God. Sanctified, set apart, used for the master, prepared for works that he has prepared for us. Flee also youthful what? Lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those 
who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. So in other words, cut loose of the old desires, cleanse yourself from all of them, pursue the righteousness of Christ, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. Maintain your connection with faith. Maintain love. In other words, here we are, it is a consistent thing. Maintain, be consistent, maintain. Peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure. In other words, do not associate with low-level integrity. Everybody got it? Do not associate with low-level integrity. But avoid foolish, ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but gentle, be gentle to all, able to what? Teach. Teach. What is the greatest way of teaching? Becoming an example. Amen? Patient, which means endurance. In humility. In what? Humility. Correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. There is a level of integrity that is required now that God is bringing us to so we don't fall short of doing his will, amen, and fall into the trap of doing a will of evil. See, doing a will of evil is rejecting the will of God. Does everybody get that? See, so many times people are looking at, well, I haven't done anything evil, but are you doing the will of God? Well, no. Well, then you're doing an evil will. <laughs> but see, they can't comprehend that because they're looking at their own goodness. They're not looking at what God sees. They're looking at what they see. Building this integrity is cutting loose from your past in every area. Galatians 4. Galatians chapter 4. Various trials to check out our genuineness. I love it. I love that word genuineness. That's a high level of integrity, man. Are we really genuine? <laughs> you know? How many people do you know that are truly genuine? Real, honest, faithful, consistent, Christ-like. Carry a level of integrity that's pleasing to God. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. I say that in the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all but is under what? Guardians. Wow. Under what? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, which is Daddy. Therefore you are no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. One of the things about reaching this level of integrity is always maintaining a level of identity. Amen? You know who you are. When you know who he is, you know who you are. You carry authority. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Brethren, I urge you to become like me. 
for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. I have therefore become your enemy because I tell you the what? Truth. Truth. Because I tell you the what? Truth. Truth. They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always and not only when I am present with you. My little children for whom I labor in birth again till Christ is formed in you. In other words, when he says Christ is formed in you, that's that level of integrity. Amen. It's formed in me and you. Holding our identity in Christ will build your integrity like his. Maintaining your identity. Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. A level of integrity required. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, if there is any what? Consolation in the anointing. Hello. In Christ. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Look at it. If we all will reach that level of integrity, we all be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God did not consider Robert to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he did what? He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of of the cross. Wow. <laughs> Again, there's that level of humbleness and humility where we die to ourself. In that level of integrity, there's another level of death for this level of integrity. Amen? One of the things that we've got to do is maintain a control, dominion over Emotional tongue, emotional thoughts, emotional desires, and emotional decisions. We've got to reach, that's what this integrity is for, so that because too many people live in an emotional state of being, they allow every emotion to dictate how they feel, how they see. How many of y'all know that emotions can dictate what you see? It causes all kinds of problems because people are offended. Hello? Bitter, anger. There's got to be a dominion and authority over emotional tongue, even an emotional opinion. Everything God is trying to do is build us a, in a level of integrity where we are solid in what he says and not how we feel. And we're going to close at 1 John chapter 3. You know, in, in the area of responsibility and accountability and so forth, in other words, we take responsibility. And the level of integrity, we take responsibility. We know that 
what, what we talked about, those two things, as a man thinks, so he is. And what you sow is what you reap. Amen? So things just don't, just don't happen. Hello? Things happen because of what we think and agree with and what we sow, we're reaping. Amen? But if you're a man or woman after God's heart, he'll turn it to the good. Other than that, the enemy will eat you up. Chapter 3, verse 1. Let's grow for it. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. But see, they will know something is different about you when you carry that level of integrity. And I went into Lowe's, and this guy started talking about something. I, started, I, started, I shared something with him. Next thing, out of nowhere, he said he was cussing. Just, he said, oh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> like God never heard that? <laughs> then I came back again. This time I got to witness to him. <laughs> I happen to live at Lowe's, but anyways. Hallelujah. <laughs> Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. <laughs> Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But you know, if we carry that level of integrity, we know who we are. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Whoever, and whoever who ha has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins in him, there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not what? In other words, sin will not have dominion. Why? Because you carry a level of integrity where sin cannot penetrate. Can't touch this. Right? Oh, happy days. Again, whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him or has lost his connection to him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Can you practice righteousness without God's integrity? No. Just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. Can a believer still be influenced by a devil? <laughs> yeah. Hello. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Look at this level of integrity keeps us in a state of being born again all the time. All the time. Whoever has been born of God doesn't sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. Now, that's phenomenal. You can't sin. Why can't you sin? It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Amen? It doesn't mean you won't say something. But you won't allow sin to reign. You know that when you make that mistake, man, you got to shut that door right away and poo, you're out of here, homie. Get rid of it. But if you compromise it, if you justify it, it's like putting holes in a boat. You're sinking. Amen? Whoever has been born of God doesn't sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. Because he's reached a level of integrity where he's walking in that born-again state of being consistently. Consistently. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. 
nor is he who does not love his brother. <laughs> Building integrity. I think we got it. <laughs> Amen? Remember, God right now is building a level of integrity so he can trust. You know, everybody's crying out, more of God, more of God, more of God, when he ain't, he ain't, he ain't doing no more. How does he do more? Less of us. Amen? <laughs> Less of us. It's not about works, it's about relationship. It's about integrity. When we carry that whole arena of that level of integrity, we are walking in a state of being born again, and nothing can touch you. Only if you allow it. Sin cannot reign. That voice of a stranger cannot reign. The only reign we're looking for is Holy Ghost reign. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. <laughs> Let this seed be imparted let it grow and bear fruit. Let it penetrate every part of our being. And let the integrity continue to build towards reach the level that pleases you in every part of our life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.